Hey everybody, we're going to be jumping in here to 4.7 and doing some homework help. Uh, what you need to understand is that the problems in this assignment get progressively more involved. Um, and so we're going to, we're going to you know, start out with something where it's just asking us to finish the problem. This is sort of like how you end a problem. And then it's going to work our way to the point where we're starting from fresh. Um, and you will have one like question uh, 22 through 33. Somewhere in there will be an example of a test question that you'll have to do. But let's take a look at number 5 here. Okay, we have n squared plus 16n plus 64 equals 36. Now to start out, these problems um, are, are not going to be difficult to start. We're going to just go through the factoring process. They're already built for us just right, so we just have to just kind of go through that factoring. Um, how do we split a 64 so it adds up to 16? This is going to be the square root, so it's going to go to 8 and 8. And the 64 is positive, so my signs have to match. In order to get a positive 16, I need plus and plus. Now, the reason we want to do that is so we can compress that factoring into one uh, parentheses that's squared. All right, so this is step one, is just getting to this format. Now that we're here, we want to isolate the n. And the way we do that is by taking the square root and peeling any layers off. It's going to give me n plus 8 equals plus or minus, and I'm, I understand the square root of 36 is 6. I'm going to wait on that just to show you one distinction that you'll notice later in this sec of uh, problems. To finish this, I just need to minus 8, minus 8, and I would have n equals negative 8 plus or minus root 36. Now, if the square root of 36 was something like the square root of 17 that doesn't square root and doesn't have any numbers inside of it, this is my stopping point. However, if it is reducible at all, we should continue to reduce. In this case, the square root of 36 we know is 6. So now I have negative 8 plus or minus 6. Sometimes when we reduce, we'll end up with something like negative 8 plus or minus 2 root 7. And that would be our stopping point. Because this reduced all the way, we can go one more step. We can answer the question, what is negative 8 plus 6? That would be negative 2. And what is negative 8 minus 6? That would be negative 14. These are the two places that that graph will equal 36, or when it would, e when it would cross the, uh, the x-axis. Um, hopefully that, that's enough to kind of help you with that. Again, these are already set to be, to be factored. So you factor them and then, uh, and then solve from there. When you get to the next section, 13 through 21, they're leaving that last number empty. And they're asking you, hey, what number would go here? Let's take a look at number 14. It has x squared plus 12x plus c. They're asking, what's that perfect number? If you were in, in class with me or you've noticed, okay, what is the relationship between this 16 and this 8? It turns out to be half the number. But then how do I get from the 8 to the 64? Well, we'd multiply 8 by 8. So that means that if we want to know this C, we take half of the B. So B being this number there, that's B. Take half of B, and we square it. So what is half of 12? Well, that's 6. 6 is not the right number to add. If I square the 6, then I will get x squared plus 12x plus 36. So step one is to figure out that it's 36. Step two is to write it in that perfect square trinomial or binomial. We know it'll be an x. What is the square root of 36? 6. And then we always use this guy's sign because we know they're going to match. The last number is going to be positive. But will it be positive or negative in the middle? Well, it depends on the 12 since that's positive. So these are my two answers. Occasionally, you will bump into problems that aren't as nice, specifically when the B value is odd. Let's look at 19 real quick. If I use 19, it's x squared plus 7x plus c. Well, the rule is I'm supposed to take half of the 7, which would be 7 over 2. I'm not going to do this as a decimal, but then I'd want to square that. Well, 7 squared is 49, 2 squared is 4. So the best case scenario for this is x squared plus 7x 
plus 49 over 4. That is the perfect way to build a perfect square. However, now I go to factor it, it'll be x and x, and we always evaluate this 49 over 4 by a root, which would be 7 over 2. You'll also notice that that's half the middle. So this guy right here is always going to be half the middle or the square root of your perfect c value. Here again, everything is pluses, and so my final answer would be x plus 7 over 2 squared. All right. Now, at the end of the day, we want to actually be able to solve a problem that starts from scratch and still be able to get through it. So let's take a look at, uh, let's do number 20, 26 will be good. This is an example of a problem you'll have on your test, just like this. x squared minus 18x plus 86 equals 0. All right, step one, we've got to make room for our perfect number. So we're going to move the 86 out of the way. So now we get x squared minus 18x plus something equals negative 86. To find that perfect number, we're going to take, take half of our 18. Half of 18 is 9. 9 squared is 81. So I'm going to add 81 here. But to do that, I also have to add 81 on the other side. Let's pull that down just a little bit. On the left, I should get x and x. Square root of 81 is 9 and 9. The signs have to match because the 81 is positive. Sorry, I've got a fly in the room. Um, and then the 18 is negative, so it will be minus minus and that will equal negative 5. So now I have x minus 9 squared equals negative 5. So I've done the complete square process. I cleaned this up. This looks really nice relative to what we started with. But to solve it, I'm going to have to isolate the x. By taking a square root with a plus or minus, I get x minus 9 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5. Now first off, 5 does not reduce as a root. But the negative should come out as an i and leave me with root 5. Last step is to add the 9. And remember, since the 9 is not part of the square root, it sits in front of the plus or minus, and we get i root 5. That is where that graph crosses. Now you might say, Mr. Welch, because it's imaginary, doesn't that mean it doesn't cross? You'd be absolutely right. It's going to look something like this. But there is meaning behind it. The more time you spend in mathematics, especially at this point forward, there will come to a point where you'll understand some of that meaning. Um, and so it's really important that we just come, become comfortable with the algebra and the arithmetic, and with time, um, that will start to have more value to you. The last thing we're going to do is very closely tied to your quarter project. So we're going to take number 43 here. And part of your quarter project is going to be you creating a video of changing something from standard form, like y equals x squared plus 12x plus 37, and creating the vertex form, which we do by completing the square. So I'm going to walk you through the step. This is very similar to, again, the bulk of your quarter project is going to be based in this process right here. So the first thing we want to do is subtract this 37 to make room for our perfect c value. So I'll minus the 37. That produces y minus 37 equals x squared plus 12x. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to add in the perfect number. I do that by taking this 12x, saying what's half of 12, which is 6, and squaring that result. That tells me that I need to add a 36 to both sides, so plus 36 and plus 36. When I combine my like terms, I get y minus 1 equals, and here I'm going to factor. Again, you could jump to the single parentheses squared factor. That's fine, but I'm just going to go slow. x and x. 36 splits as 6 and 6 to add up to 12. And in order for the 12 to be positive, I need plus and plus. Because they're duplicated, I can write x plus 6 quantity squared. Now all of that equals y minus 1. To finish solving this, all I need to do is add 1 back to the other side to get that y equals x plus 6 squared plus 1. That is the vertex form 
of the equation that we started with, which is great because then I can find the vertex. And the vertex is the opposite of what's grouped with x, and then whatever number is added or subtracted at the end, just the way it is. There's my vertex, negative 6, 1. All right, hopefully that is enough to kind of piece you through the different stages. You're going to need help. If you if you doesn't make sense or you missed class, you're probably still going to need to ask questions. Please come in and do that. Good luck, and we'll see you then.